Good morning, welcome to the center. Would you like a program? I mean, it's a beautiful day, and it's a beautiful day to be at the center. Thank you. Good morning, welcome to the center. We're here. Good morning, beloveds. Welcome to the center. Good morning, I ask you to just join me in love and peace as we settle into this most sacred day. Breathing in the love of God, nature, the sun that has really blessed us this summer so far. Feeling the love of God coursing all the way through each of our bodies. Feel the love because that's what each of us are. It's a love being. God is coursing through each and every one of us. God breathes us. Feel the peace enveloping your whole body. Knowing that each of us are in the right and perfect place right here, right now. Again, just feeling the love, the tranquility. the joy, and even exuberance, being alive in this wondrous time and place. Each of us exudes God's love and light right here and wherever each of us go. As we settle into a moment of silence, just feel that love, that peace, that light surrounding your body, coursing through your body, <laughs> feeling it in every atom of your body. Feel the joy that is spreading through your whole system, 
your mind, your body, your heart, the love that is just so much an inner part of each of us. As each of us go out into our day knowing and showing our God love and our God light. And just feel that love and feel the joy. And know that each one of us, each of you, are an absolute marvelous, wondrous specimen of God, an individualized spark of God. Step into that truth and feel it and know it. And now I ask you to come back into this, this sacred space and when it's comfortable for you to open your eyes. Namaste. And I invite everybody to go within if it's comfortable for you and allow my words to be your words. And I know right here, right now, there's only one presence, one power, one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life right here, right now. When I speak my words, I know my words are not only true for me, but true for each and every person in the sanctuary this morning. This is your first time here at the Las Vegas Center for Spiritual Living. I say welcome. If you're a member, I say welcome. If you're a minister, I say welcome. All our congregants, welcome back. This is going to be a truly glorious day. I'm thankful for Reverend Dan, Reverend Stacy, Reverend Cheryl. We have a powerful guest speaker this morning. Jeff, soon to be Reverend Jeff. I say welcome. His words will be inspiring, I know, and uplifting. I know this in my heart. I'm so grateful to be a member of this center. The energy, the love, the beauty, and the joy you'll feel this morning will be overwhelming. I say thanks to Patty and Dave, and our sound, sound engineers, all our ushers, Our, our teens and our young people in the back right now, they're hearing the, the message also. I recognize God is all there is. God is everywhere, right here, right now. And for this, I am truly grateful. And I invite you to open your hearts. Go within and feel just the beauty and the, the amazing joy and love that permeates this room. For this I am truly, truly thankful and grateful for, and I invite you to join with me and say, so it is. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Sabah al khair. Aloha kakahiata. One day at home. One day at home. Nihao. Dubre utra. Dubre utra. Oh, hello, Zaymas. Oh, hello, Zaymas. What does your Jeff? Que aloha rain de Godaimas. Roganakan Han, you want to can you send them a star? You want to can why? Nihoni, Nihoni Arimas. So stay. Hawaii wa shushin des. Kokoni Irunova tot them over a screen of Imas. He's a shibri des ne. じゃあなんでこの人が日本語喋ってると分かりません誰か日本語わかる日本語わかる一人
ったりなんでこの白人が日本語を分かれば知らないでしょでもここは米国でしょなんで,なんで英語喋れないのうん。さあ。Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Las Vegas Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Jeffrey K. Aloha Ryan. It is my great honor and pleasure and privilege to be here with you again this morning. It's been a while, and I'm really glad to be back. And actually, I think it's my fourth time, but who's counting? You know. <laughs> I love being with all of you. And so,、um, I am from Hawaii, and that was Japanese that you were hearing. I lived in Japan for six and a half years. I taught English and social studies at a Japanese high school in northern Japan bilingually. <clears throat> so I've lived abroad and I have a very different perspective. And growing up in Hawaii, we have a very different perspective of life、um, on the mainland. <laughs> and how truly in Hawaii, we are very multicultural. And here on the mainland in the United States, We are very multicultural. In fact, we are a multicultural society. And so that's what we're talking about today is the multicultural America. So, besides myself, who here、um, speaks multiple languages? Okay, wonderful. Just take a look around, see the hands going up. Wonderful. All right, thank you. Who here has lived abroad or was born abroad, born outside the United States? Or lived outside the United States. Again, around. Wonderful. Who here is vegetarian? <laughs> All right. Great. Vegan, vegetarian, both. Okay. Excellent. All right.、Um, who here has ever worked in the casino industry, the hotel industry,、uh, gaming industry, service industry? Or currently does? Good. All right. <clears throat> Who here remembers where they were when President Kennedy was assassinated? Okay. Who here remembers where they were when Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated? Who here is a dog person? <laughs> is a dog person. <laughs> Not a non person, a dog person. <laughs> Who here is a cat person? Who here has both? All right. There you go. All right. So, what you see here is that even within this group here, there's a lot of cultures going on. Who's the coffee person? l o v e s coffee? Yeah, Starbucks? All right. Or you know, other alternatives. Right? <laughs> And then Patty goes, woo! It's like, wait. <laughs> right? So, even within this group here, regardless of, a,、uh, regardless of race or ethnic origin or religious background in which you were raised, right here, sitting in this room, there's a wide berth of diversity. Of different cultures, and each person here is multicultural, regardless of what you may look like, where your ancestors came from, how your ancestors got here, or how you yourself got here. Right? Each one of us is multicultural. Because here in Center for Spiritual Living, how many are members of Center for Spiritual Living? Right? We have our own language. Talk about spiritual mind treatment outside this place, and everybody's like, what are you talking about? I don't understand. It's real. Right? We have our own language, we have our own idea. You know, we have our own way of presenting in the world. One of the things that we present here is that we are all one, that there is oneness, and that is part of our very foundation and our very, the very fabric of who we are and what we are. But as Ernest Holmes says, we, you know, unity does not mean uniformity. Right? Unity is not uniformity. How boring would it be if everybody were exactly the same? Everybody looked exactly the same. Everybody walked exactly the same, talked exactly the same, thought exactly the same. I mean, when you look at it 
Like you look at the all of the beautiful colors in nature, or the different birds, or the different flowers, or the different fish in the sea. Each one is unique and each one is beautiful, but what would it be if we only saw palm trees? Or we only saw a rose? Or we only saw a trout? There is no interest there. There is nothing pulling us forward. There is nothing pulling us to a greater yet to be if everything is exactly the same. And so, yes, there is a unity behind all things, as Ernest Holmes says. There's a unity behind all things, but there's a diversity through all things, and all things are saturated in divinity. And so, who here has a iPhone. iPhone people. Okay. Android people. Flip phone people. No cell phone at all people. Okay. So Android and iPhone, very different cultures. Right? They're very different cultures in our society. But yet they both function and do similar things, correct? They're both means of communication, but how you communicate, how you use the device, the ideas behind the device, or the way we have to work with them, the way we interface with them, the way we interact with them is completely different. Not completely different, but varied and different. So, can you imagine if there was only one? There's not a choice. You only had the iPhone. There's only that. Or there was only Android, and there wasn't anything else. And some people are like, no, it doesn't really matter. It's an Android phone or it's an iPhone. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Right? It's all a smartphone. Right? Or better yet, technology is all there is. <laughs> right? Technology is all there is. Not even paying attention that, yes, there's the smartphone, or there's the computer, or there's the TV, or there's anything else. Those are all varieties of technology. But if we boil it down to, no, there's only a smartphone, and I really don't care whether it is an Android or an Apple, I only see a smartphone. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. What do you have in your pocket? You have one or the other. Right? What do you have in your pocket? Clearly, you see a difference. There is some sort of difference between the two, and you have one of them or the other. And so, I have a smartphone. My husband as an android. And if I were just to go through the world going, I don't need to know anything about android. I'm really happy with my smartphone. I don't need to know anything about android whatsoever. It's fine. Android people can do what they do. That's fine. I'm an Apple person. I'm an iPhone person. You know, I go through life fine. I don't really need to be concerned with Android people. I don't really need to be concerned with how an Android phone works. I don't need to be concerned that they have something really odd called, right now I think the latest operating system is Nougat, and the last one was Marshmallow, and the one before that was Lollipop, whatever. I have an iOS, and my current operating system is an operating system 10. Okay. I don't need to be worried about that. And they have all these extra buttons at the bottom. I don't understand the extra buttons at the bottom. What is that button over there? Is that a return function? And then why do you have a home button, but then you have this other button that like shows everything before? Isn't it easier just to have one single button than you just push a couple different times? But see, if I'm only an Apple person, or I'm only an iPhone person, and I'm not willing to learn and I'm not willing to look at, or I'm not even willing to explore or even acknowledge an Android person, 
or the android way of being in the world. I'm missing out on a whole section of society that is not open and available to me because I'm not open and available to it. Right? So this morning, in preparation for this talk and this downloaded, I said, I said honey, show me how you turn on your phone. Because I didn't know. I'm perfectly happy being an Apple person. I didn't know. And then I thought, okay, wait a minute. What if my phone doesn't work and I need to make a phone call? Something happens and my phone is dead and the only phone we have available is his phone and I don't know how to use it. Right? So I go to him and I say, how, can you just show me the basics? At least show me the basics so that I can begin to understand. I can begin to learn. I can begin to grow. And now I know how to use his phone. Not, I'm not fluent in his phone by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm comfortable at least turning it on. I made the step. I stepped forward and said, okay, show me how to turn on your phone. I did good. Yay. <laughs> right? It's the same thing when whether we're talking humorously about Android people versus iPhone people, or Android people and iPhone people, as it is when we're talking about African Americans, Latinx, European Americans, Asian Americans, right? We all come from these wonderful, vast, different cultures. And we continue to operate in them, and they continue to inform us. They continue to inform our operating system, if you will. Yes, we all may live in the United States. Yes, most of us may have been born in the United States. But we have all these different cultures behind us. And it is through these filters and through these lenses that we interact with the world. And so it's our responsibility, then, to learn about each other's cultures. To take the opportunity to sit down and be open to communication and simply ask, why, what is it about the Android that you like so much? What is it about Android that you can share with me and tell me and teach me? What can I learn from you? And then the key to open communication is shut up and listen. Right? You're listening for understanding. You're listening to understand. You're open to being, under, you're opening to understand rather than speaking to be understood. Seek first, or seek to understand, not to be understood. Right? And then we learn, and we open, and now I can appreciate the fact that he has all these fun little things that he's, are customizable on Android that are not customizable on iPhone. And how fun it is that he's got little seashells right now for all of his little apps. That's fun. <laughs> we just got back from Hawaii, and so he's enjoying that, you know, remembering Hawaii um, with his seashells. Right. So it doesn't really matter. It, no, I don't want to say it like that. <clears throat> it does matter where you come from, what culture you're a part of, who your ancestors are or were, and which cultures you participate in within the larger culture of the United States matters. It absolutely matters. Because that's part of God expressing its individuality in, through, and as each one of us. Each one of us is an individualization of the one life, of that unity that I spoke of. It's a unity behind it, but it shows up diversely. And so it's in that diversity that we celebrate the diversity. And when we celebrate the diversity, there's so much more joy, so much more love, so much more God to be able to be experienced. And by having the diversity and really celebrating it and honoring the diversity, evolution continues to flow and continues to evolve. There's a, between the Android and the iPhone, right? This camera, then this camera, then this camera. And because of the diversity, because of the different ways that technology is showing up as a smartphone, 
then we have this evolution happening, the evolution of technology, the evolution of the smartphone, where we all benefit from the evolution itself. Rather than staying stuck in, I'm back here at iPhone with a camera that only had four pixels or megapixels. Right? So it is too that when we come together as people of multi-cultures coming together and sharing and speaking with each other and having an open communication and open dialogue and being open to listen and being open to understand that we together continue to evolve and continue to grow. And the United States as a multicultural society continues to evolve and grow and get better and better and better. And it all starts with love. Love is the great healer. To remember that we are all the divine, that God is love and love is God, as Ernest Holmes says. God is love and love is God. And if each one of us remembers our own divinity and then looks into the eyes of the person sitting next to us or across the way, And we see the divine in that. And that's when we say namaste. The divine in me honors and recognizes and honors the divine in you. We see that. And we begin to see that and we begin to see the love there. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right? Love your neighbor as yourself. See the difference. Celebrate the difference. Be open to the difference. Be open to the diversity. But also see the, uh, see the person as yourself. Love them as yourself. For truly, love is the greatest healing power that there is, as Ernest Holmes shares. Love is all there is. That's the truth. Love expressing as each and every one of us. Love expressing as our Android users. Love expressing as our iPhone users. And love expressing as those beloveds who insist that they want to go back to the rotary phone. <laughs> Because life was simpler when we had the rotary phone. <laughs> those two are our beloveds. And we have an opportunity to listen to those folks and hear those folks and hear their concerns. And we have the opportunity to love them up right where they are with the rotary dial. <laughs> to love them up right where they are. And why do you like that rotary phone? Well, it's durable, and it's simple, and I can do that. And we can find common ground by being open with our communication. Just find common ground with them. So you like to watch TV, right? Yeah? You can do it on this, too, you know. You like to read? Yeah? You can read on this, too. Not making them wrong for liking their rotary phone, but inviting them to join us. And remembering that it is a smartphone. That it's just a smartphone. And that it's all technology behind it. But it's the love that draws it forth. It's the love that's the evolutionary force. It's the love that expresses itself as everyone in this room and every culture in the United States. So, the United States can indeed be a great and wonderful place when it is the most loving place to be. And that begins with you and me. 
that begins with all of us here. It begins with us embracing our unity, celebrating our diversity, recognizing our divinity, and realizing, making real, realizing our divinity with each other. We are a multicultural society living in a multicultural world all part of the one infinite love intelligence that brought all of us forth equally. And so, if you celebrate 4th of July, happy 4th of July. It's wonderful. And let us also not forget that 4th of July does not mean the same for everybody, perhaps even sitting in this room. That it is a wonderful and great day to celebrate the ideal and the vision of a world that works for everyone. The ideal and the vision that we are all created equally, given inalienable rights of life, love, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is a celebration of the ideal that we are a country <coughs> indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So happy 4th of July. Celebrate joyously, safely, and sane fireworks from these guys. Yes. <laughs> Blessed be. And so it is. <laughs> Closing prayer. If you would stand and connect. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And so breathing in, I just recognize here and now that there is only one life, one presence, one infinite power, one infinite beingness, this one that I choose this morning to call God. It is love, it is wisdom, it is peace, and it is grace. It is the peace that passes all understanding, and it is the love, the unconditional love, that is in each heart that has brought forth all of creation in its image and likeness. For truly I recognize that there is only one life, but there are many faces of this one life, many experiences in this one life, a diversity in a unity, and a divinity through all. And I recognize that this is the truth of my being, and as I know it is the truth of my being, I know it is the truth of every being everywhere, always. And so I speak a word of love, I speak a word of unity, I speak a word of gratitude here, this morning, this day. Recognizing behind all a unity, through all a diversity, saturating all a divinity. I know it is good and very good. I give thanks for it, I let it be so, and so it is. And so it is.
and please join us in the back for birthday cake and anniversary cake. There's plenty of it. We'd love to see you come back and join us for that. So now repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. I know this in my mind. I know this in my mind. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my body. And so it is.